Welcome to Thursday's Tactical Tip. I'm Yoki Marks and we're here at Warrior's Edge Armory again. We've had a couple of people ask about a situation where they either work at a place or they are forced to go into an area where they're not allowed to carry their handgun. And they asked, what options are there for using a knife in a situation where you may have to defend yourself? Now there are plenty of situations where that may come into play, whether it be disparity of force, in other words, you're smaller, they're bigger, or if it is a, it's, it's only you and there's two or three of them, and it's even just a hand-to-hand -hand situation, at that point, if you can articulate why you are in fear for your life, you may then choose to deploy a deadly weapon, a fixed blade knife or a folding knife in order to defend yourself. But what we're going to talk about today is what happens in a situation where you didn't want to, but you're forced to bring a knife to a gunfight. This is a situation that I do not envy. But with the proper training and the proper mindset, you can actually do okay using a knife inside of a gunfight. Right now we're going to go through the scenario of a active shooter situation. Um, it could be in a mall, in a workplace, in a school, wherever it is. You have done everything you can to get people to safety. You have got them out of the way. You have set yourself up in, the, in a position of advantage, which means um, we're imagining a doorway right here. I've set myself up behind the doorway so that if the shooter comes through that door to attack the people who are sheltered in place inside, I can then do something about it. So what we're gonna go over now is the person is coming through the doorway and the gun is pointed out. As they come through the doorway, a lot of people, whether they're trained or not, fall into the habit of keeping their arms extended as they come through the doorway. So it doesn't ma matter either way if their arms are fully extended or not. If they are fully extended, what I'm going to do first is I want to clear the line of fire, which means I'm already hiding over here. He comes through. I don't want him to be able to turn to engage. So what I do is as I step in and at an angle in toward his shoulder, I'm going to use this hand in bladed position to clear. This is going to keep his body from swinging in this way. Now, could he drop his hands? He could drop his hands. I could take a shot into the lower body but we're gonna continue with this move. There's a million what ifs, and if you wanna play the what if game, we can play it all day long. I welcome you to play it. Come on down, we'll run through scenarios. I have fun doing it. All right, so it comes in, I've cleared, and as I cleared, I'm holding my knife in an ice pick position. I slice up into the tricep. From slicing through the tricep, I'm shoving the knife down into the side of the neck as I wrap this up. So it's gonna be done in almost one motion. It comes in, I'm here. This clearing goes into a grab. This knife slices through the tricep. I'm gonna turn you this way a little bit. And from here, I'm coming down to the side of the neck. From the side of the neck, I'm going to rotate my hand over. I'm not pulling the knife out, it's already there, use it. Rotate the knife over, slide across the throat. And now we're gonna turn this way, right here. From across the throat, I can then choose to either push down into where the brain stem is. If you feel on the back of your own head, you'll feel a little soft spot and a little notch. I'm placing the, the knife right there, I call it the helmet. I'm placing the knife right there and shoving in as I push the person down, okay? Now the reason I keep my knife in a ice pick position is if I need to deploy my knife a little more covertly than, hey, I've got a knife. The person comes through and I need to feign something. I'm like, whoa, 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 there's not any issues here. I can keep this and like, oh no, you know, it's, it's a little more hidden yet. I just grab and I deploy. So again, when, it, when, the, knife, uh, when the gun comes in, I'm around the corner, he's come in, I am pushing with both hands up as I move in, I instantly go to this grab. This has already cut through the tricep. I'm showing down to the side of the neck, into the shoulder right above the collarbone. 
extremely good place to place the knife as well. I then rotate my hand over, I'm gonna turn like this so you can see. I rotate my hand over as I punch across, using this to come into the side of the neck or up into the helmet of the head. Okay? So, what you need to remember is this is something that does take training, does take thought. I don't ever recommend you searching for someone with a gun if you only have a knife. They can kill you from a lot further than you can get them. And therefore, you have to play the tactical advantage. You have to have an area where you have secured people. You have to have an idea of they're going to be coming this way or they could come this way. And you have to be willing to get a little bit messy in order to defend yourself or someone else. We can play what-if games all day. Well, what if they do this? What if they do that? What if you don't get both their arms wrapped up? Or what if they come in with one hand? I'm here to tell you that whether they come in holding the gun with one hand, holding the gun with two hands, it doesn't make a difference. What you're looking for is violence of action, that abruptness of hostility in the first three to five seconds. You're looking for that surprise attack on the enemy. You may, if you ever had to do this, you may get that first person. If they have a buddy, they may kill you. It is what it is. You have to decide what is worth fighting for, what is worth dying for. And I'm Yoki Marks. Welcome to Thursday's Tactical Tip. Hope you have a great week.